So it was like 14 years ago that Steve Jobs said, in order for there to be a new category of device, that device has to do a number of things better than existing categories. So in the case of the iPad, it had to do a number of things better than smartphones, and it had to do a number of things better than notebooks. And about 30 something hours ago, I was applying that same logic to the Apple Vision Pro. It has to do a number of things better than my daily driver, my M2 MacBook Air, and it has to do a number of things better than my workstation, which is a Mac Studio. And I created a list of the things that I do pretty commonly with, uh, with both of those uh, computers, both of those interfaces. And I think when I think of things like that in my tech stack or my work stack, do I look really good? How, how is it? I got your picture. It's easy to see that the Apple Vision Pro is not so great. And I'll show you in just a, just a minute what Webflow is like on the Apple Vision Pro and what Figma is like on the Apple Vision Pro, et cetera. I think the big misunderstanding was I went in there thinking that it was going to rip and replace key parts of my existing workflow. And if that's the game, I think right now for V1 of Apple Vision Pro, it's going to lose. But I think that's the wrong way to look at it because last night, once I made the swap over to this dual band, which by the way, the single band thing, it's the worst cheek pressure and forehead pressure ever. I think once I switched bands and kind of got the hang of this is maybe something a little bit new and different, it became a little easier to understand how I can creatively use this to maybe do new things or different things than I'm doing in my existing workflow. I wanna know if this can be an actual core business tool. So when I'm doing something like traveling, I constantly want a 27 or 32 inch display and I'm usually using the 15 inch laptop. I wanna know, is this a practical way to travel? I wanna know if this is a practical way to develop, and we're talking web development, to design 2D and 3D space. I wanna know if I can use Midjourney in this, if I can use OpenAI's ChatGPT in this. And those are the things I'm gonna be exploring over the next couple of weeks. Um, and I'll do a first look, just first impressions. I did a little bit of this yesterday, but I'll, I'll do a first look and kind of share what I'm finding with using certain tools and different ways to use those tools. So we'll start with Weblow, uh, we'll look at Figma, uh, we'll install, I haven't done it yet, we'll install ChatGPT and try that out. Uh, but with that being said, let's put the Vision Pro on. Okay, here we are, we're in the Vision Pro, let's go to Safari and open up Weblow. So this is what you might think of when you think of spatial computing. You'd think of loading up a web app like Webflow. The problem is most web apps out there, in fact, most apps out there are not optimized yet for spatial computing. So you'd think, okay, I can set the, the width here. Let's do 300 pixels. It works, it actually kind of works. What really gets you in trouble though, is when you try to do things that are really designed for a totally different interface, where it's like 400 pixels margin on the top. Always a best practice, and that's fine, but I wanna really just drag and manipulate, and that's one of the best features of Webflow, and I just can't drag and manipulate things, and it just ends up glitching out everything. So let's see if I can add an element. Nope, that's not what I wanted can't really do it. So instead, what I found is really powerful is if you have your portable. So normally when I'm traveling, if I'm doing something like Webflow, I'm looking down hunched over the laptop like this. And of course I'm limited to this 15 inch uh, screen real estate. So what I wanna do with Apple Vision Pro is hit the connect button. And what that'll do is it'll black out my screen, my primary display here blacks out and suddenly I get a giant 4K display I can place anywhere. So instantaneously, I went from a 15 inch development environment to, we can make this as big as we want. This can be like a 85 inch television screen context. And I can put it wherever I want. And one of the things I didn't see in a lot of the ads or the documentation, the, the, the literature for Apple Vision Pro is that when you move something closer or farther to you, it's not that it's getting huge, even though it's right next to you. Obviously this is not great, but it actually relatively keeps the size consistent it just changes the perspective. So you're not overwhelmed, even though it's a large display, you're not necessarily overwhelmed with it. It's just positioning it where you want. The other great thing is, has this shadow effect. So you can see the Webflow designer is kind of hovering over the countertop there, which is pretty great. I think the other thing, and this is already just developing like normal, can have this, and notice how it's not blocking. Even though it's open, it's not being blocked. The screen's not being blocked. So this, even though this is kind of overlapping with that, it's, it's okay, I can still see the development environment. So I could even, if I really want to, I can move it down there. I can make it about this big. And it's like having a giant display right in front of me. So that's one thing. The other really interesting thing, and this is originally, I'll be completely honest, I thought it was a gimmick, but I think this is really great. So if you're in, a, if you're in any environment, you just want some peace, and you wanna go, let's say, to Joshua Tree, 
You can go to Joshua, Joshua Tree, and the more you turn the digital crown, you get more and more immersed. And now it's like my Webflow development environment is in Joshua Tree on like a 100 inch display. This is pretty cool. And you know, I'm not having to look at the keyboard. It's kind of weird if you see my, I have to find the, the home row key. So that's already a little bit of a bizarre thing. So naturally I can either do this and see, ah, I'm way off. Okay, so if I find my home row keys, I can just start working. So I can use my mouse like usual, uh, but I can do Command E, add a div, do Command E, add a heading. Uh, what do we want that heading to say? Hmm, how about, hello world, it's classic. Hi. Uh, and basically I can develop like usual. So I think that's really a powerful thing. Now, in the context of Apple Vision Pro, my monitor or my display, my Mac, ends up just being another thing. So let's say I want that over there. I can go to Vision Pro, I can go to the home screen and I can pull up literally anything else. Let's just do settings, move this back here for a second. You can see it's like having a multi-monitor setup. The one limitation that I'm noticing is there's only one display that you can extend no matter if you have a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, uh, Studio, uh, Mac Studio, it doesn't matter. So the other interesting thing is, let me close out of this. The other interesting thing is this works for basically any app. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna close out and just go back to Safari, design with Figma, finish. Okay, here we are. This is Figma. Yes, I'm good with the tour, thank you. Okay, so right there, we just gotta reload, okay. X out. So let's see if we can move, whoa, okay. We are moving something around in Figma, so it's, it's actually, whoa, that is surreal. Okay. So how do I scroll around in Figma? Oh, I can highlight, this is so cool. Oh, this is surreal. So if I wanna select, yeah, same thing. I'm having selection issues. Again, the interface is not optimized, nor should it be at this stage, but it's not optimized. So I'm moving this frame around. That's pretty cool. How do I, oh, that is amazing. Okay, so I keep getting this forced reload. I don't know if that's a Safari issue or what's going on. A problem repeatedly, let's refresh. So we're moving out. Okay, select, move around. This is incredible. I can actually imagine reviewing work like this. So let's see if we can go into comment mode. And let's drop a call. Oh, this is so cool. Incredible. Incredible. What is happening? Oh, it's showing up there. So that's weird. This doesn't update with that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna trust Figma as the source of truth. Okay, that's that's glitching out. So clearly some rough edges. This is not any fault of Figma. This is very clearly just a totally different interface. And I think I may <laughs> I may not have access to Figma anymore. Okay, we need an even more serene environment for this one. Let's do the moon. Okay, so we're on the moon. So what's weird about being in one of these environments is it completely makes, it, everything has disappeared. However, that's not great when I don't immediately see the choice to connect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up, go to control center, and get MacBook Air. There is some subtle latency, but for the most part, it's fine. Let's add some text, pretty normal. I, I will say as someone who generally doesn't hunt and peck on the keyboard, it is a little disconcerting. It's, I don't know if disconcerting is the right word. I think the preference would be to switch back to this or to have a little bit less of an immersive environment. So I can look down and just find home row, find the trackpad if I need to, because doing it completely immersed like this, it's just too much for me. It's just a little, it obfuscates the important context that I need just to keep grounded. So something like this might be better. Plus the moon is just, I don't know if it's the best option. Let's switch, let's do Mount Hood. Okay, I'm in Figma. I could easily see myself forgetting about being in this Apple Vision Pro thing. It's been a little bit of time and I don't really feel fatigue from it. The interesting thing here is 
When you're used to a, a larger immersive environment like this, so I can put this up here, you can imagine tons of frames. So if you're doing proofs, if you're doing commenting, etc. Let me go back and do that again. So if you have a ton of frames, let's just create an example of this where it's... If you have tons of frames and you're doing a review, I can see this being an extremely helpful environment. I'd say the screen real estate you're afforded in something like this is pretty great. And I think that's the killer app right now. I think everyone's looking for this in terms of native functionality, in terms of a lot of the demoable things, the native apps that are here, some of the compatible apps from iPad, etc. But I think the real key, at least for me, the unlock so far in these two, is having like a 200 inch display for Figma reviews. This is pretty incredible. I could see this being pretty helpful. Okay, let's close out of that because the next one, we're not gonna need this. The next one is going to be ChatGBT. Chat G, whoa, chat. Okay, chat, this is chat GPT. All right, let's go, this is not the official app, so let's go to iPhone and iPad apps and let's download the iPad chat GPT app. Okay, we are in chat GPT in Apple Vision Pro. So a couple things right off the bat, I wanna know if I can use dictation the right way, allow. Augmented reality learning experiences utilize spatial computing. So I'm noticing the the read, the uh, the width, the travel distance is high. So I'm gonna switch into portrait. That's a little better. Maybe I can make this a little smaller. Oh, that's so cool. So this is kind of cool. If you just wanna have ChatGPT as your assistant in the context of Vision Pro, maybe you're doing something else, you have you know something else going on. I'll just open settings as an example here and, and you're working with stuff. You kind of have ChatGPT over to the side and this is pretty helpful. So you can imagine having multiple windows, maybe even having, this is, this is interesting, maybe even having your primary computer right here. So check this out. When you're using the trackpad, you can actually scroll just like you normally would in the Mac. Keep in mind, this is an iPad app running in an Apple Vision Pro, and the trackpad is from a MacBook Air. There's so many words there. And the incredible thing is it just kind of works. So I want a new chat, it just creates a new chat. If I want to just go in here and I'm using my Mac to control an iPad app within the context of an Apple Vision Pro, this is pretty neat. I think one of the most interesting things about this is that you can very quickly, and I'm starting to do this, you can very quickly forget that you're in the Vision Pro. I know that sounds weird, but especially when you're in these kind of immersive views, if you're, if you're down like this, I suppose it's a little, even, even then I can imagine forgetting about it, but especially when you're immersed, it's surreal. How much you stop and you stop realizing that there's a device, an entire computer on your face, and you're just doing stuff. You're just doing normal stuff. And it's it can be on your computer, it can be with your normal interface right here, it can be with these iPad apps, I'm sure it can be with a bunch of other stuff, but that's my big takeaway right now is for this kind of mirrored, let me turn this down. For this this mirrored view, this extended display thing, this is so far for me the killer app. So I'm gonna close this. I normally end these videos or I talk about my business and I have definitely been heads down in business mode, but I'm really curious about how business is going to be affected by this. If it really is going to be something that's gonna you know, just be an expensive purchase that's gonna sit on the shelf or be a cool gimmick or a demo when friends come over? Or is it going to be something that I actually integrate into my workflow, that I derive value from, that actually changes the way that I approach something like video editing, something like Figma, something like Webflow, web development. If I, if I take my normal stack and I think, what are the things here that might be better on Apple Vision Pro, what is that result gonna look like? So I'm gonna spend the next 13 days remaining in this return period to really try to answer that question. Uh, with that, I'll look over at Cinema 4D, look over at this, this it's gonna look weird for a while, people walking around with this, people on a plane with this, but you know what, for right now, I have not been this optimistic about a piece of hardware uh, or an interface uh, in the longest time. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I am excited. And with that, I'll say thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one because I'm going to go a lot deeper with this. Take care, everyone.
Your face, your head is so weird. I haven't even put on the Vision Pro yet. This... It's like rubber hands. They're not rubber hands. These are totally normal hands. I feel like you look kind of like... Like, the thing that's throwing me off is you're fading into whatever background they've put you in. And you look like a Jesus. 